Today we're discussing viruses. So are viruses living or non-living? Well, viruses are, are extremely small agents that cause disease and spread from one organism to another. So would you say that a virus is a pathogen? Yes, a virus is a pathogen, and to answer your first question, viruses are not living. First, let's examine the structure of viruses. So some viruses are really, really simple and only contain a capsid. And the capsid is going to be a shell made out of a protein that contains DNA or RNA. So um, it also has an envelope that helps the virus to enter a host cell by binding to it. So did you know that surface proteins also help the virus to recognize other cells? So viruses are composed of genetic material like DNA and RNA, and a protein coat, envelope, and surface proteins. Awesome. So now let's go ahead and talk about how they reproduce. So viruses can't reproduce on their own. They need a host cell. So viruses can either be lytic or lysogenic. Those are their two little reproductive okay. phases, so lytic or lysogenic. lysogenic. Viruses that are lytic come in a host cell reproduces and then bursts out, killing the host cell. So would the flu be an example of a, of a lytic cycle for a virus? Yes. A virus may also take the lysogenic type of reproduction. Uh, that one is a little bit sneaky. Sneaky how? Well, a virus um, will, instead of going into the host cell and reproducing quickly and becoming lytic, the lysogenic <coughs> cycle um, the virus, the virus's DNA and RNA um, will be integrated into the DNA of the host cell. So when the host cell replicates, then the virus genetic the virus's genetic material is also going to replicate as well. Yes. An example of a virus that produces in this matter would be shingles. Oh, so shingles can remain dormant in the system, uh, which means not active. For, for, for a period of time and then hop back into the lytic stage and hop back into that yes, uh, it can go symptom back and stage. Forth. Right. So, um, is that right that it's usually something environmental that will trigger the uh, lysogenic stage from becoming, from being lysogenic to hopping back into that lytic stage? Yes, sometimes stress would do it. Um, that can also cause the, the shift from lysogenic, the hiding part, to the lytic, the ick, I feel sick. Um, so how do I make a virus go away once I have it? Okay. So good question. Uh, we actually don't. We actually don't take any medicine. So once we have a virus, if it's lytic, so something like the flu, we actually just have to let it run its course. So if it's lysogenic, then will it remain in your system for a very long time, uh, if not forever? Oh yes, absolutely. So it, it, it sure will. It will remain there for, for a long time, if not forever. So is, is there a way, is there a way that I can, do you know, is there a way that I can prevent from getting um, a virus like the flu? Yes, there is. Um, you can get a vaccine when we get a sh our shots when we were babies and even when we're 14. Um, we get a vaccine for um, a viral disease that can hopefully prevent you from getting the virus altogether. Great. Study this diagram carefully. On the left side, you'll see the lytic cycle. That's the um, part of the virus reproductive cycle where the DNA um, is reproduced, the protein is uh, made, and new virus particles are made and causing the cells to burst and release new particles. On the right side is the lysogenic cycle. That's where um, the virus's DNA um, becomes part of the host cell's DNA and is um, rep replicated, but no virus, virus particles are made. Uh, it just kind of stays dormant, laying low, until the right time when it can become lytic.